Lena, what's happened? In this week's Bondi Vet compilation, meet the inspiring animals who stare death in the face. He looks like he's probably got hypothermia. I don't know he's gonna make it, honestly. And lived to tell the tale. She fell from about 10 metres and doing a few calculations, that means she hit the ground at about 50 k's an hour. These incredible creatures are truly lucky to be alive. I just can't believe she's making a tail. <laughs> you so sweet. At the Bondi Clinic. Vet student Erin is carrying in a boxer who's been hit by a car in peak hour on the Bondi Expressway. What happened now? John is the Good Samaritan who's risked his own safety to rescue the hit run victim. Had she run, she would have run into the path of another vehicle, so I stopped. So he's not he's not your dog? Not mine, no. Yours? No. No? All right. Um, thank you for stopping though. That's, that's fine. In that sort of traffic, yeah. that's, that's a, yeah. a bold move. While the broken leg is horrific, Chris is more worried the boxer may have suffered a collapsed lung. Right now, she's gasping for air, and that worries me. We're now getting up towards 150, 160 mils, which is a huge amount of air to have leaked out of the lung into the cavity. So that says that she's probably torn an airway and actually being hit by the car, and that air is now rushing out, almost hissing out into that space. She's got a pneumothorax, so even though she takes deep breaths, she just can't get that air in quickly enough. She's been hit by a car. The boxer's she's owner, okay. Diana, has been lane. desperately she's searching she's for her beloved pet. Molly was chased out of the park by another dog and was too scared to come back. I just ran and ran and screamed. If the pressure of the air around the lungs gets too high, it just squashes them and she can't breathe, she can't get the air in, that'd be the end of her. Bye bye Molly. Okay. Bye bye Chris will look after you. Okay. Now that Diana's arrived, Molly Saviour John <laughs> is happy to go home. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you so much, I'm so... Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for stopping, too. It's welcome. Very cool. No Chris now needs to x-ray Molly's leg and torn lung. The most amazing thing for me at the moment, though, is just the fact she's, she's just not responding to that. She doesn't seem to be in pain. She just seems as though, hey, what's, what's going on here, guys? Must be going through hell. The handy thing from this x-ray has shown that on that left side, which is what we were, we were working on before, there's no black line. So that's where I've actually done my work here. It's this right side where there's still air there. If I can suck that back out, we're a chance here. Two-year-old Molly was run over and left for dead. The boxer has a badly fractured leg, but her torn lung is the greatest danger. Yeah, we're just getting towards the end of it now. All I was praying for was that I find her. Well, this is a best case scenario in a series of worst case scenarios. A second set of x-rays shows Chris is winning the fight. To see her lungs looking like they're, they're fully inflating now or very close to it is, is a, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a sigh of relief and it's, it's probably the way that, that Molly feels right now too. She can actually breathe. This is a tibia coming down here. Molly's leg has been broken in two places but she'll need to stay at the clinic for at least two days until her lungs have stabilised. Let's go home and cry now. Yeah, you've been through a lot. I think my adrenaline's wearing off. Only then will the courageous boxer be transferred to Sash for surgery. Bye, you. All right, I'll see you later. I'm going to say, I really admire Molly the whole time she's been in here. No fear. Yeah. Okay, you've been very, very brave today, you have. It's going to catch up with her though, and she's going to start to feel that pain and, and realise that she's got herself into a bit of strife. 
Leave the light on. Is that what you want? Hmm? All right. We'll check on you during the night. Is not nice. Oh, sweetie. So, so brave. Three days after her accident, Molly has been transferred to Sash. Good girl. Yeah. The boxer is still in danger from her torn lung, but surgeon Andrew Marchevsky can't delay her leg surgery any longer. We've obviously got to fix her fracture, but uh, her life threatening problem is the pneumothorax or the air around the lungs. A chest drain is being inserted into Molly to minimise the risk of the anaesthetic. So if there's a little tear in the lungs, we'll actually push the air through that tear and it'll leak outside the lungs and that will cause the lungs to collapse. And then suddenly she crashes and yeah, you've got to be really careful. I'm sucking air out now of her chest, yeah. That's a litre of air that we've got out of that without really trying very hard. It's a bit like Meccano, doing this sort of stuff. A little bit more blood involved, but um, it's essentially Meccano. How's she going here? She's good, she's very stable. No problems with the breathing? No, she's breathing a bit more now. Right, so this is the last screw. But, um, I'm really pleased with how it's come together, to be honest. I think the leg will be 100%. I mean, it's, we've got a, two or three months of healing ahead of us. It's all right. Don't worry about it so much. You can put your tongue in. Go on, have a sleep. You have a sleep. It's all right. I mean, she was trying to walk on this leg when it was flopping all over the place, so I think she will, she'll run out of here. It's going to be fun keeping quiet. Let's go down. No, 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 no. Settle, settle, settle. Good girl, good girl. Three weeks after being hit by a car, Molly is recovering well and is back in her favourite park. I know you're expecting me, but I thought I'd bring along someone that <gasps> oh probably God. wanted to come along as well. Oh, John. Hi, Diana. Hello, and John. look at Molly. And I think you You, remember you want to say you? hello. I'm just stoked. Just stoked. Yeah. How, how anybody could, could hit not just Molly, but any, any animal and just leave it on the road. <laughs> One more. Why not? More? I can't imagine what I'd, I'd be doing right now if anything seriously happened to Molly. I'm really grateful. I'm very, very grateful. So, thank you, John. You're welcome. Big thank you from me and a huge thank you from Molly. Well, I've already got that. <laughs> Considering the state of panic that Molly would have been in, if John hadn't stopped, she would have just kept on running into the path of another car. She would have been gone. John saved her life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, is that enough? I'm not, going, I... to, I'm not going to give you any back, though. <laughs> she wants to repay you with love. Okay. She's trying to come towards Zoe. you. Zoe. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, one-year-old Zoe is in agony after a 10-metre dive onto a concrete driveway. How did it happen? OK, babe. She jumped off the second floor balcony. OK. You saw her jump? Yeah, I saw her jump. Oh, yes. goodness, you poor thing. I look, my heart went from here to here, here. And I was too scared to look over the balcony, you know, because I thought I'd see her lying on the just laying there, but she wasn't there, and I thought, well, she's got up and walked, you know. Looking at the way it's hanging there, I I'm quite worried that she's got a broken leg. Hey, puppy girl, we'll make you feel better now. Lisa is taking Zoe out to the treatment room to give her pain relief and to find out just how bad the fracture is. Oh. Oh, see that? That's crunchy. Oh. The bone shard is actually punctured through the skin, so it's not the kind of fracture we like to deal with because it means that that bone is exposed to infection and bugs stop fractures from healing. And, and I guess if we don't treat this aggressively, she could lose that leg. Good girl. I know, it's sore, isn't it? Ready? X-rays confirm she has smashed her right leg in four places. Oh. That is a mess. 
Incredibly, Zoe has escaped any internal injuries. It's unbelievable. When I look at these images, the only fractures I can find are in her back feet. The rest of her body seems OK. It's just amazing. Hello, my darling. Let me see you, darling. Let me see you. It's a complicated surgery. All the bones in that foot are broken and it's going to take a long time to repair that. <laughs> Poor Gwen is absolutely traumatised by what's happened. I mean, she's in more shock than the cat is. She's my baby. She's my baby. She really is. Gorgeous girl, aren't you? She's taken a dive from a balcony. Super cat. Why did you do that? And smashed up her foot. Do you think you had wings? Andrew Marchewski is ready to start major reconstructive surgery on Zoe's fractured foot. It's amazing. We sort of she fell from about 10 metres and doing a few calculations, that means she hit the ground at about 50 k's an hour. All she's done is broken one foot and got a little crack in the other. I mean, it's an awful injury, but it's amazing that's all she's done. Oh, it's so crunchy. I'm just going to try and expose the bone ends. Andrew will now place pins in both ends of the fractured bone to try to anchor the break together. The problem here is the bones are so fragile, I can't grasp them with any instruments as such because they'll just end up shattering if I'm not very careful. Potentially we'd be looking at an amputation. All right, that's good. I think the foot already looks a little less swollen. That's nice. Couldn't look any better than that. Um, that's really good. Right, so you want to go back to bed now? Yeah, back to bed. In the short term, we're worried about swelling of those toes, and it's important that we allow some give in the bandage so that they do swell, doesn't cut off the circulation, because that can happen like that. Now it's a top cage, so don't fall out. No jumping. What are you doing? I feel a bit funny. Let's go see Mum. An anxious Gwen is allowed to see her best friend for the first time since Zoe's major yes, surgery. Yes, I can, Papa Girl. Hey, 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 hey Papa Girl. Hello, Zoe. So, hello, Zoe. Oh, she got here. so excited when you were. Mummy's this. here, darling. I've only had it 12 months, but I feel as though I've had it forever. Just walk in the house and it's just so different, you know. Gwen is 78 years old, and this was a really traumatic experience for her. She keeps reliving that night when she saw her cat just fall off the balcony. I think she's probably suffering from a little bit of post-traumatic stress herself. She loves her mummy, don't she, darling? She sits on the lounge and we watch TV together. And we watch all the animal shows, don't we? Beautiful girl, soon be home. Soon be home. Look where we are. A week after her disastrous balcony dive, Zoe is well enough to return to the scene of the crime. My goodness. Hello, Hello Gwen. Hello, Look who we've oh got. Goodness. You want to get out? Oh, my goodness. No jumping, no jumping. <laughs> It's such a nice feeling to bring Zoe home to Gwen. I mean, the look on her face when she saw her baby come back home was just priceless. It feels absolutely wonderful. You've been so wonderful. She is my baby. She is so beautiful. You wait there, Zoe. There is one thing that's going to change in this household, though, and that is the balcony is out of bounds. Zoe has to stay inside, and I think Gwen's going to stick to that. My goodness, that is a serious drop. It's, it's a miracle. It's, it's honestly, it's a miracle. I cannot believe that Zoe fell off this balcony and lived. Well, you can sit there, that doesn't matter. You can sit there, you can sit anywhere you like, darling, but not on the balcony.
On an extremely wet day in Bondi, Kate suddenly gets an urgent call for help. Hello? There's a person outside and it looks like there's something wrong with it. Okay, well let's go and catch it, shall we? Is it nearby? Uh, yeah. Okay, let me go and get the towel. Okay. This little kid runs in from nowhere and he's like, Possum, the possum needs help. And I have no idea what he's talking about, but my first instinct is I'll just follow him. It's gonna ruin my hair. And I'm taking Izzy. Okay, let's do it. Great, it's like cyclone weather. If the possum is sick or injured, it will stand little chance in the heavy rain. My goodness, it's like a river. The weather today can only be described as cyclonic, like next level raining. Oh no, there's a possum, he's been running from here, he's underneath the carpet, he's just sitting in the tree. I don't know what's wrong with him. Okay. The likelihood of us finding a possum in the middle of the street, in the middle of the day, is near impossible. God. These guys are nocturnal. They don't come out in the day. It looks like he went in there. He, he went in there. in there and he was hiding behind the rubbish bin. And, and then he, and he, went, and then he came jumped out and then he jumped in the tree. Like he climbed back into there. Then now I don't know where he is. Okay. He's been here all day. Okay. Let's wait till he moves. Can't see any movement. The rain is absolutely torrential. The light is becoming super dim. I'm so conscious of the fact that we're losing light. Let me go stuff around here. And I'm thinking, we're never going to find this. Oh, there he is. I found him. And out of nowhere, I see this little tiny thing on the ground. Hey, buddy. Oh, he's a little ringtail possum. Hey, sweetheart. He's just a baby. This is here, this is her little baby. Oh, sweetheart. Okay, we've got one, but there's others. There's a big one. Oh, sweetheart. So he's just a little baby. I don't know that he's gonna survive, guys. He's looking like he's really cold and he's really wet. It's too late. This is too late for him. I'm not gonna be able to save him. He's just cold and he's shivering and he's shaking. He looks like he's probably got hypothermia. I don't know he's gonna make it, honestly. He looks like he's trying to, trying to not live. Come on, let's get him back to the clinic. That's the first thing. Get him really warm and then get him some fluids. Yep. The baby possum is hypothermic and that means that his body temperature is too low to sustain life. Okay, bye. It is really important that we get him warm and we get him warm really quickly. While Kate's team start to take care of the baby, Kate now urgently needs to locate its mother. I have no idea where she is. Could she be anywhere? She's gonna be really distressed. She's not gonna have a baby. So where's she gonna hide and where's she gonna go? So we gotta look, I gotta look for some movement. It's the only way to find these guys. I am so determined to find this mum. Where are you, Mum? I mean, I just feel for her because I think she's been running around like a crazy possum looking for her baby. Okay, okay. Is that Mum up there, do you think? As I'm hunting and I'm searching, I'm searching every tree, I spot this little possum box. I just know, I have this feeling that she's in there. <sighs> We've got to focus on now trying to save this baby, right? So at least if we can do one thing good, it will be to save the baby. Hey, don't get hit by a car, Izzy. I'm so cold and I'm so wet. I'm so happy to get out of this rain, even just for one second. Oh, look. Oh, he's in a little sock. He's in a little sock. Is he all right? Yeah, he's just cold. But he's been hair dried and he's just getting warm. Oh, this is nice and warm. All of my girls have put in such a mammoth effort to keep this little baby alive and there he is in this little sock, snug as a bug in a rug. This is our makeshift pouch called a sock. <laughs> the possum is safe and slowly getting warm, but every minute is critical to see if he will survive. This is a heated blanket, so we use this for surgery, and it's called a bear hugger, and it really acts like a big bear hugging them so that they don't get cold. 
Well, it looks like at least he's not injured, right? So it just sounds like as though he's cold and he's wet. I thought he was dead, but it turns out right here has helped keep him alive. So that is good. Ideally, I could find the mum so I can put them back together, but I can't find the mum. I really want to reunite these two because for the little guy, the reality is, is that growing up without his mom, that's bad news. It may mean that he can never return to the wild because he can't fend for himself. And so if we can't find mom, it pretty much changes the course of this little guy's life. Okay, you ready? Kate is going to make another attempt to locate the baby's mum. We've got to do it before it gets dark. Once it's dark, we're, we've got no hope. Let's go. Okay, guys, she's going to be somewhere. Let's think positive. Positive thoughts. Objective, finding mum. If we don't find mum, this little baby possum has less of a chance of living as an orphan than he does of having a parent. I'm just going to go check this tree. Okay, she's got to be around here somewhere. Okay, no ringtail posse moms. I'm really disappointed and I feel like, oh, I can't find her. I've searched everywhere. I will be so happy if I can find mum because it means that I get to reunite these two. Well, there's like a box up in this tree and like it's got a hole in it and it looks like there's possibly something in there. I have no proof of this, but I am swear that she is in that possum box. And then just as we're like debating how to get her out of the box thing. Where is she? She just runs out of the box. And then all of a sudden she sees us all and then just makes a run for it. So she runs all the way up the top of this enormous gum tree that we're never ever going to get her. So now we're back to square one. I think we're in a position where we basically just now have to wait until the baby's well enough that we can put the baby back somewhere and hopefully that she finds it. Oh my God, it's so warm here. I feel like I need to be wrapped in a bear hugger. Holy moly, I thought you were dead, little guy. I thought you were a goner. And look at you. Inside, the baby possum has made a remarkable recovery. I think we should call him Peter. Peter? <laughs> Peter the possum. Honestly, he is getting better by the second. Like right in front of my eyes, I see this little possum like just come to life. You know, this baby little possum that was on the brink of death, you know, and now he's opened his eyes. So it's just magical. It's a really, really good moment. It's a good moment for everybody. He wants to live, he needs some food. After Peter is feeling better, it's really important now that we call Wires so we can get a carer to come and collect him. These guys are absolutely amazing and I just know that they're going to do an absolutely brilliant job in looking after Peter. Oh, hello. Oh, sweetheart. Hey. And he's a good little guy. His yeah. name's Peter. <laughs> carer Alona is delighted to meet courageous little Peter. So he's good. He's like nice and robust. Yeah, get the pouch and yeah, take okay. him home and bring him back in a few days. Yep. Reuniting with his mum. That would be amazing. This was a perfect outcome. It would have been better if we could have caught the mum and we could have reunited them, but that was probably asking a little bit too much. We found the baby, we rescued the baby, a baby that was on the brink of death, and he has gone to a carer and he's going to be okay. okay. Look after him, hey? Good news for Peter the possum, who is reunited with his mother the next day. Hey guys. Hi. Hello. Hello, beautiful. Who are you? This is Luna. In Isleworth, Nurses Nina and Sam have called Scott downstairs to see three-year-old Luna. What's going on? So Luna came in, she was out on a walk in the woods and then she suddenly fell over and started screaming. The young Cocker Spaniel's just been rushed into the practice after a freak accident in the park. Pretty nasty wound she's got. Okay. So we've just put a dressing on it. Yeah. I'm just taking it off now to show you. Okay. Oh, 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 baby. Luna. Can't be too bad. What was she? Was she missing for a long period of time? Or? No, just out of sight for a couple of minutes. Okay. I found like it's not really sure what happened or what caused it. 
Prepare yourself. Really? Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Looking at this beautiful cocker spaniel, I'm horrified. Luna, what's happened? Oh, I tell you what, I'm glad you're wearing that because you don't want to see what's happening back here. I have never seen anything like this in my 23 years experience as a vet. This is a wound like nothing else and it looks like she's been bitten by a shark. Yeah, well done. Oh, oh, me. I'm so sorry, so I'm so sorry. It wasn't me, it well wasn't me. That is, that is grim, isn't it? That is out of a horror film. Although Luna's been given a pain relief patch, removing the temporary dressing is excruciating. What a brave little dog Luna is. That must have been extremely painful to basically be skinned alive. And this brave little dog really is holding it together extremely well. Oh, baby, you're so brave. Oh, you're still wagging your tail. Oh, you're a good girl. So, um, I see we've got some pain relief on board, so that's excellent, just what she deserves. I mean, have you ever seen anything like that in your career? No, it's massive. Yeah. All right, well, we are certainly got our work cut out fixing that then, Keep ladies. Going. I think let's give her an anaesthetic and let's put her out of her discomfort for the short term and let's try and fix that unbelievable wound. It can't be underestimated just how serious Luna's injuries are and how life-threatening they could be. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, my God. I tell you what, she is so lucky that she's still here. Because if she was caught on a fence, as you know, there's a massive artery about as big as my finger that runs just there. You can see it pumping, look. See just there is the femoral artery and if she had caught that, then she wouldn't be here now. There's no doubt. It's just hard to fathom, isn't it? Like, God, you're going for a walk in the park with your dog. And then it looks like Jaws has attacked it. Anyway, it's a pretty dirty wound. Luckily, we do have quite a bit of skin to play with here, so I think that we should be able to sort this out. All right, well, should we start just giving her a bit of a clip and a clean, and let's, um, let's get her into surgery, shall we? It's incredibly upsetting to see a dog suffering like this and to see the extent of an injury just from a walk in the park. And not only that, the owners are really distressed as well. You were saying it was more just the, the screaming from her because she was in so much pain. And you yeah. just said every time you shut your eyes is all you could think about, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so, unfortunately. Yeah. It was quite traumatic, you know, for something that you love that much to be in that much pain. But it, I mean, it is massive. Yeah. You know, if you think of the actual size of the dog, I mean, that hole's about the size of her head. My job now is to understand, is there any skin missing? If there is skin missing, then I'll need to find skin from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the way that I'll do that is by doing a flap, uh, which we extend over the wound itself. So I might have to go quite high up on her flank, on her side, in order to find that skin, alongside using the skin which is contracted down near her knee. But it's a big job. Looking at this horrifying wound, I really can't say if Luna will pull through because it is such a huge wound. And although it's a superficial wound that I have to treat, it's massive. But you just don't know what kind of injuries might have occurred underneath. So all I can do is to try and close this horrendous wound and hope that this little dog makes a full recovery. surgery like this where you do go shit <laughs> because you've made the hole twice as big and it was already pretty big before so yeah it is a bit of a squeaky bum moment it's when you feel nervous and you fart oh. like, yeah <laughs> you never heard that it must be an Australian thing yeah. What I'm doing is tacking, so I'm basically putting tension is underneath uh, the superficial layer, the epidermis, I'm just trying to encourage it all to come back together. Um, so it's just a little time consuming, 
I'm sure people watching this would be quite horrified by this injury, and so are we. But actually, one good thing about it is that all this tissue is nice and healthy. So it looks very red and very angry, it's bleeding, but that's good because it means it's got good blood supply and it's almost certain to heal very well. And that's that. Nice. Amazing. Oh, man. I think that's a fantastic job. Oh, I'm so knackered. Yeah, it's a lot of stitching. One million stitches, yeah. So I've just finished the procedure on Luna and it's uh, very rewarding. So we now have a dog that has skin covering her from top to bottom, which is the way nature intended. And uh, she's gonna wake up and recover and grow back fur and you'll never know that this horrific injury had ever happened. Get your dad to come and pick you up. Yeah. Two hours later, and Luna's ready to be reunited with her incredibly relieved owners. Here's your baby. Okay. So I'm gonna gently pop. I know that's mum and dad, isn't it? Here we go. Oh, that's a nice way. I can't tell you how rewarding it is to be able to correct such a horrific injury that Luna had suffered and send her home to her loving owners. You love your daddy, don't you? It really is a lovely thing that we do. Oh, it's, it's incredibly upsetting to see it's something like that. You've done an amazing job. Oh, thank you. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it, you can't say it's anything else but, but a gruesome injury. And it's, I just can't believe she's wagging her tail. <laughs> you, she's you're so sweet. <laughs> yeah, happy, happy to see Daddy. Ah, she's got antibiotics, she's got pain relief, uh, but she'll make a full recovery. And animals are resilient and, and brave and still able to sort of go home and, and be happy. They don't feel sorry for themselves and it's quite cool. All the best, guys. Take care. See ya. Bye, sweetheart. Yikes. retriever they're here that is coming out of the car. They're the radiographs. Is this the bloated one? Yeah, it's bloated. The owner's really distressed. Ooh, I think dog will be a bit distressed too. That's got to be a GDB for sure. That's full of air and that looks like she's got a bit of a twist in it. So let's go find her. Okay. Cheers. X-rays show six-year-old Jasmine has a deadly condition called gastric dilation volvulus, where the stomach twists and stops blood getting to the heart. If we don't do something now, she'll die. I mean, it's simple as that. I didn't feed her till 12 o'clock last night. Then she threw up between 1 and 1.30. I let her outside, and she's a great hunter. Right. She disappeared for about an hour and then came back. Right. And she threw up another three times during the night. By morning, Jasmine's stomach had blown up. I can't tell what I have to receive. You've done them before. You've right? Plenty. And you have had success, some success. Oh. I would say 80 to 90% of dogs do very well. Right. There's a good reason for Ross's interrogation. Two years ago, he lost another curly-coated retriever to the killer condition. You know, as long as I'm not getting some intern working on it, you know, or something like this, you know. No. I'll, I'll, because, I'll be the know, one. Obviously, I don't know you guys. You know, no, no, I appreciate you know, it. You've been recommended and all that. Yeah, know. yeah. No, no, I'll be doing the surgery. I'm a specialist. I've mm, done OK. That. Hundreds. Well, OK. That's fine. The best thing we can do for now is get some of that air out and the best way to do that is to literally stick a needle or a trocar in there and, and let it hiss out like a balloon empty. Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. That's what I wanted to do. You can hear that? Right. So we're just sort of getting all that gas yep, out yep, of there yep. so they'll just make it feel much more comfortable. What causes GDVs, there's a whole lot of things but it is associated Often when they've had a, a meal, then they go and run around a bit. And for whatever reason, maybe the stomach's a bit heavy and it just flips on itself, twists, and as soon as it does that, they said the stomach just starts blowing up, it can't empty, and then they very, very rapidly decline. So yeah, I mean, it is difficult, and, and especially with Ross, he is on edge and he, he's pushing to say, you know, it's gonna be okay, and I can't promise that. Really, I, I don't know how bad she is inside until I'm in there. 
and I could get in there and find that her stomach's black and most of it's died, and that's awful. I mean, her, her chances of survival, if that's the case, it's just woeful. Good luck. Okay. Thanks, Ross. Good luck always helps. Mm. We'll see how we go. Okay. It's twisted 180 degrees on its axis, so it's, you know, it's what we expected. Um, so I've just got to get in there and flick it back into the right position, then we can have a look at what the stomach's doing and see if it's damaged at all. So I'll just see if I can get in there. There we go. Well done, Andrew. The uh, stomach's a bit bruised, but um, considering she's potentially been bloated for about 12 hours, it's actually remarkably good. If we didn't get onto this very quickly and didn't operate, she'd die. I think another hour or so and she'd have been collapsed in a heap on the ground. The time is the essence, and that's where I've fallen down, you know, with this one. You know, he's on my screensaver sort of thing, so I can still say hello to him. You know, he was something really special. Now Andrew needs to make sure Jasmine never suffers another attack. He stitches her stomach to the wall of the abdomen so it can't move. Blood pressure's been all right, still. And I think your chances are fantastic now, but I always worry for that first 24 hour period. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Happy? Oh, well, we hang in there. Goes on, doesn't it? Because, uh, as I say, that's what happened with the, the other one. We took him home. Uh, it was as if he just wanted to say goodbye to us, you know? It was dreadful. So we'll just see. Mm, she's not with us, is she? No, okay. Hang in there, Jazzy. She's had better days. Mm, mm. Oh, that's nice, huh? Good girl. How's your tummy? Andrew's happy with Jasmine's progress, but still cautious. Good. She's still not 100% out of the woods. I'm not going to promise anything to Ross until I'm, you know, a gazillion percent sure. Hello, sweetheart. Time for you to go home. <laughs> Come on, Shook. Here you go. Hulk of girl. I don't have any food for you. Your dad might, though. A much happier Jasmine is about to be reunited with Ross. Oh, she's been such I think a... she realises now. Now she's got it, <laughs> yeah. Ross is finally convinced that Andrew was the right man for the job. And, you know, I actually went home and Googled um, Andrew. And, you know, I was satisfied with, you know, what, what had come up there. And he's obviously, a, you know, re a really top vet. As soon as I saw what a stomach looked like, I thought, right, she'll be fine. I wasn't going to tell you that because no, you didn't point. want to hear it. No, no. It's, it's just a totally horrible thing to go through and you feel guilty yourself that you've actually created the problem because, you know, they just mean so much to you. You know, they're part of the family. Regular star, aren't you, Jazzy? I swear he's getting heavier. Heavier by the day. Go on three. Thank you, thank you. Lisa's bringing three-year-old Edwin to see Scott, but his weight is not the issue. Hello, handsome boy. So what's Edwin in to see me for today? Um, well, over the last couple of months, I've noticed that uh, he's been having terrible problems with... Getting out of his box? <laughs> <laughs> come on, mate. Wanting to come and see you. Yeah, it's not you. that bad, is it? <laughs> Holding up into your life. With, um, with runny eyes, runny nose, sneezing. Right. Uh, and at times having episodes of coughing uh, where he just sounds and feels very full of fluid. Right. OK. Well, that all sounds fairly significant, actually. Mm. Um, it does sound a little bit like feline asthma. Yeah. So sometimes he sounds a bit like Darth Vader. I feel really sorry for him, and there are times when he's just, you know, seems to be struggling, seems more lethargic. Um, he's still eating, but he's playing less. 
And then more recently, as I said, the coughing is quite worrying to me. Uh, it's thought that maybe one in a hundred cats in the UK can suffer with asthma, feline asthma. And when we're trying to manage asthma, obviously asthma can be potentially life-threatening. So what we need to do is get ahead of it, uh, diagnose it early, and, uh, and then have them on certain levels of treatment. Asthma in cats does present in a fairly similar way to people. People are short of breath, their respiration rate's high, uh, they're just struggling to breathe, struggling to survive, and exactly the same thing can happen in cats. If we do find that it is asthma, then it can be caused by so many different things. So we do need to sort of mine down into those, find out exactly what causes might be present, uh, and then how best to manage it. But first, of course, we need to sure. effectively diagnose. Sure, okay, that sounds like a good plan, thank you. And just remind me, because um, I don't want to embarrass myself, I know that you're a doctor. What, what kind of doctor are you exactly? I'm an ear, nose and throat surgeon. Yes, yeah, of course you are. Yeah, that's, uh, yes. that's not intimidating at no. all, is it? No. <laughs> right, I really have to look after you now, Edwin, you don't do. I? You do, you do. I feel a little bit sorry for Scott. It's not going to be easy because um, obviously I'm, I'm coming from a specialist background, but uh, I know he'll do the right thing and uh, you know Scott's an excellent vet, so I'm very happy to leave Edwin in his capable hands. And one thing I must say uh, is that I have always had a soft spot for animals with human names. Um, I've got the dogs Betty and Dave, and actually the first cat that I ever treated in the UK was called Colin, which I loved. Yes. So Edwin is right up my street. Joss is perfect. Well, he certainly is. I've never known a cat to be quite so soft as, as Edwin is. Um, he never scratches. He wants to be with you the whole time. He talks to you and loves to lie on our pillows at night when we're sleeping. Bye-bye, Edwin. You'll be a good boy today, and I'll see you later. And you to Scott. There we go. There we go. Right. Come on, handsome boy. No pressure. Uh, be good, both of you. Right, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Say bye, Mummy. Bye, Edwin. Uh, I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Mm. Oh, God. Edwin, I've got a little uh, confession to make, is that um, I'm slightly allergic to long-haired cats, so I'm getting relatively similar oh, clinical signs to you <laughs> right now. Cats do die because of asthma attacks. There's varying degrees of severity, of course, but the worst-case scenario is, yes, they can be alone, they can be stressed, they can have an attack, they're unable to breathe and they can die. You must behave so well, this cat. Such a good boy. Yeah. Certainly the rag doll coming through and is easy going, Yes, aren't you? very much so. If they could all be like this, our job would be a lot easier. So today it's about trying to diagnose the condition and see how far down the line towards asthma Edmund really is. So first of all, we're going to do some blood work. We're going to be doing some x-rays as well, having a look at the chest and seeing if there's any changes. All right, buddy. Oxygen on. X-ray. So the news is that it does look like the early stages of asthma. All the tubes leading down to the airways are just a little bit thickened. It shows they're a little bit inflamed. But I do think, looking at this x-ray, there's definitely lots we can do to help manage this condition. But suddenly, what was a routine investigation has turned into an emergency. He's just not breathing the best at the minute. Edwin has crashed on the table. OK, so you just have to start giving me some positive air pressure. Yep. Yeah, we have to uh, inflate the chest to just get a better clarity to that lung picture. Uh, but by doing that, he just stopped breathing for That's a little me. bit. When you have an animal that tries to die on you, you go into autopilot. Have we got the drops that go under the tongue somewhere? Uh... And all that training that we've done just kicks in and straight away we start giving him some injections to try and stimulate his breathing. And at the same time, giving him positive air pressure, just putting some air back into those lungs, getting him going again. That was him? Yeah, it was him. Yeah. Is that, it wasn't you, no, was it? wasn't it? me. There we go, good boy. Oh dear, okay. So that's a nice breath there. So um, yeah, he just decided to... Did someone just switch the lights off? Can you switch it back on, please? But just as the tension starts what? to subside... You're kidding. 
there's another unexpected setback. I think the power's gone. The power's gone. Automatically, there are swear words going through my head, but you've just got to get on with the job. You have to try and not panic. It's tough. Just keep your wits about you and focus on the cat. Keep the ISO off. Uh, we've checked the power box and everything is up. Whole street's off. The whole street, you're kidding. OK. The one bit of monitoring equipment we've got is on battery. Thank goodness. OK. Well, we're not going to be able to do anything more until we have light. No. Yeah. For second year vet nurse Jess, this is a confronting lesson. It's just a panic, really. For my first time experiencing something like that, it's a bit of a shock. They train you how to deal with these situations, but you're never really properly prepared for it. Oh. Hey. Hey. Oh. hey. Let there be light. <laughs> and a breathing patient. More importantly, so. Yes. Good boy. Right, so now we can see you again. Let's do the next step. To try to find out more about the state of Edwin's lungs, Scott now wants to carry out another procedure. Just as we go to perform the bronchoalveolar lavage, which is putting a tube and then fluid down into his lungs, Edwin decides to stop breathing again. There's too much at stake here. He's far too compromised, and there's absolutely no way, when a cat isn't breathing, am I going to put fluid down his lungs. We're going to wake this cat up, because uh, he's just not stable. It, we're just That's not in a position really to go any further at the moment. And doing another procedure which could further compromise his breathing is just not a good idea. Not a good idea for him, certainly not a good idea for us. All right, it's OK. It's all right, I know. There was a fright there, didn't you? We know how much Lisa loves this cat. He's certainly not going to die on my watch, I'll tell you that. But yeah, it's um, hairs on the back of the neck stuff. Right, so a very complicated case just got more complicated, okay? Yeah. So you guys need to watch this cat like a hawk, okay? No one leaves the side of Edwin this afternoon. If you need a toilet break, tag in your mate. I was very proud of Emma and Jess. Jess, it's the first time she's seen anything like that. And rather than cry or shake or be in the corner, she was actively participating in resuscitating Edwin and bringing him back to life. She's a good one, that one. Watch this space. This is what we all trained for. Mm -hmm. And you both did excellent, really, really well. So good job, good hustle. Any situation like this, the few hours afterwards are always the crucial ones. Um, he's still not fully recovered. Yeah, this is uh, us set in for the afternoon now. When you've got a critical patient, you don't leave it side. Hi, buddy. How are we doing? A little bit better than this morning. Are you ready to go home? I need to take you out of your litter tray, though, because you're not helping me being stuck in there. For Edwin, it's been five hours since his near-death experience. Hello, Hello buddy. He is. He's a handsome guy. Yeah. Look who's that. It's his mummy. Scott's not looking forward to breaking that news to Edwin's owner, Lisa, who just happens to be an ear, nose and throat surgeon. So, yeah, eventful day. Um, he gave me a bit of a shock okay. today because we were went through the process, took the bloods, blood's beautiful. We then went to x-ray and just after that he stopped breathing. Uh, and then he decided to not breathe for quite a considerable amount of time. So he had to do external air resuscitation, just basically filling his lung. Oh, well, <laughs> with, my, with my animals, I have to say, it's, nothing surprises me. But, uh, you know, obviously, Scott and his team are, you know, consummate professionals. Lisa's taken it well, but Scott's decided not to give too much information. Although I'm always completely honest with clients, Sometimes there's maybe a little bit too much honesty and I wonder if we say that we were watching the cat recover in darkness because all the power had gone out. Might have been a step too far, so I think I might tell her that tomorrow. I think you and I thought maybe it was at the milder end of asthma. Yeah. The way he's responded to just basic breathing under anaesthetic makes me think that it's much more severe than we mm. first anticipated. Mm. So I'm going to be recommending to Lisa that we start with a puffer spray, an inhaler. Just something to be able to provide Edwin with a medication which will cool down the allergic reaction, cool down the inflammation, and get him breathing a little bit easier. Go, what do you think of that? It's 
too bad. Indifferent. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. It's not overly impressed. We will see an improvement, sure. which will mean that we shouldn't get caught out by an asthma attack in the future. So although it was scare for me today, yeah. I think the long term is actually pretty bright for him. Can you hear that, Edwin? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I think he's in good hands. Oh. We've got a diagnosis, we've got a plan, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll carry on from there. Yeah. All right, well, mate, mm. your mm. time is oh. done, and I'm really glad that I've been able to send you home in one piece after the oh. scare. Well, thank you so much. Today? I'm sorry he caused you so much trauma. Oh, no worries, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really hope that he's going to get in this box yeah. a little bit easier than he got out. In you go. Good, Good boy. boy. Good boy. Right, let's get you home and get you some supper. Take care. Okay, bye -bye. all right, take care. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.